this. And now I'm going to do my test. Oh, let me put a drop. Okay. And now look at this goes. You see how it's worked right into the canvas? It's no longer floating on top. You're already halfway there to a good paint film because it's starting to grab the fabric. You don't, a paint film is not good if it's not adhering to the surface. So as you see, it's sort of stained the canvas. In other words, it, the water and the surfactant sucked into the canvas more so you have a better paint film. So like I said, you, you're thinning your paints down with a lot of water, fine. But you want to be able to put something in that's going to make it a better paint film. And that's what you would use. Um, here is one of my favorite boards. It's been with me for 11 years now. It's really beat up, but I'm too attached to it to make a new one. Um, this is what's known as drawdown in paint land. This is how um, technicians and artists up there and anyone who's making paint, how you see color. All right. Before I go off on that, let me just sort of explain what's being shown here. Uh, this side is normal pyro red. This side is without surfactant, the stuff I just demonstrated. So what you're hearing and seeing, actually, is a bad paint film because it isn't a smooth blend. I mean, some people might say, oh, I really like that texture, but you want to add other stuff to get the texture and not the lack of surfactant. So it's, what you're really looking at here is the paint not being nicely blended. So this is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's not supposed to be. If you want this effect, you can add something to your color to get that. Because I know it is kind of sexy. <laughs> okay, going back to the drawdown, because I think this is very, very important. Like I said, it's how they really see color. What they do is they have a certain tool, they put the little drops of paint up here, and they take the tool and they drag it down over the black, it goes over the black, and then the tool is picked up and it's scraped down. All right? So the whole thing is what's known as a drawdown. The top part is what's known as mass tone. Mass tone is however the paint is coming out of the container. And the bottom is what's known as undertone. The reason I'm showing you this and telling you this is, is when you buy a color for the first time or if you're mixing up a color, don't just look at the mass tone. The mass tone at times can be very misleading and can really mess you up. Always do a drawdown and look at this because sometimes the two are radically different. Sometimes the true strength of the color is in an undertone or a very thin veil or glaze of the color. Right. Anyone want to guess what the black line is for? Come on, how long can you do? Transparency. To show how transparent or opaque a color is. Also very important because every color is slightly different. Every pigment will result in a more or less transparent color. So what Golden does for us, besides hand painting those charts, is they also put a stroke of real color over three black lines. So right away, you could see how transparent or opaque the color is. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But before I talk about that, I'm going to talk about another reason of, uh, as I mentioned, Golden only makes professional quality paints. Right? They do not make student grade quality paints, and yes, you have to spend the money. And hopefully most of us realize that there are no deals in life. You get what you pay for. If it's cheap, you either fell off a truck or it's cheap. No one's going to make a good quality product and you know because they're a really nice company and sell it to you. you know, um, Liquitex, which makes really good paint, has their student grade quality paint, but they're not going to sell you a tube of cadmium yellow that has any cadmium in it. Cadmium is a semi-precious metal. They're gonna, if you notice, it'll say cadmium yellow hue. Most student grade quality paints say hue. Hue is another word for color, but in paint land, what it's telling us is that it's made up of more than one pigment. So, pretty much, if somebody's selling you a tube this size for $2, you can pretty much guarantee that there's no cadmium. There's a lot of other colors that look like it. And then, there's not even a lot of pigment. There's a lot of filler. So it may look right coming out of the tube. But when you go to mix it with another color, everything's kind of gray off. Why? Because there's a lot of filler. 
once again, there has to be a reason to, uh, something that justifies them being able to sell it at such an inexpensive cost. Golden does make a whole line of different hues, but they're high quality. They're all like, you know, tested and, and all of this, but they're made for different reasons, which I'll talk about in a second. Golden does make a cadmium yellow hue, and that's done for one major reason, and that's for the people who want to get away from using toxic colors. The cads are toxic. So, and then also, uh, there's been a big fight in Europe about the cads being all removed. So, they, you know, there's a lot of stuff being done on experimenting with new pigments to replace them. Um, okay, nice big photograph of a nice large container of Henson yellow. Right? Like I said, we have a stroke of real color over three black lines. And then there's this term down here, light fastness. This is very important for professional artists. What's light fastness? Well, it's a test. And what they do is, um, They'll, and I'm going to make it real simple because you know, it's much more technical than this. Um, they put out a color, they cover half of it with, let's say, paper. They expose it to 100 years of museum quality light. Now, obviously, they're not sitting around, they have it all sped up. Actually, they have these fields in Florida where it's out in direct sunlight. And as we know, anything in direct sunlight is going to be affected a lot easier. So these are out there. So it's 100 years of museum quality light. The paper then is removed. If there is little or no color shift, it'll get a light fastest rating of one. If there's a little bit more, being subjective here, it'll get a light fastest rating of two. Golden will not use any pigment that has a higher number than that. I strongly suggest that you look at your the paint brands that you're using, and if, um, if there is a light fastest rating on it, they're telling you exactly what they think of you and your art. But what is light fastest? What does that mean as a professional artist? Well, I sell my paintings for a good amount of money. You know, unfortunately not enough for me not to do my day jobs, but that's okay, I'm not complaining. Um, but uh, I, I do this yellow painting, and Lou buys it to match his yellow sofa. I don't care, I got to check. That's the yellow sofa. Five years from now, he calls me up and says, Roy, it's no longer matching my sofa. And I would say, Lou, buddy, pal, I love you. But it's your sofa that's changed and not my painting and I would be right. There's a whole different realm between what goes into art supplies, what makes up art supplies, and what you would put on you know, for home use, like a, a painting wall or something. There's a survey that uh, people will repaint their wall every five years. But it doesn't matter how expensive of a gallon of paint you use, you're not going to get more pigment. It would be idiotic for them to be putting more pigment in. It's going to be covered over. It's not 